it's hard when you know how many big games you've won, right? And how many times you've faced the elimination round and, and done and gotten the job done. So it's just as a human being, it's hard to, to not uh, kind of get into the mitigation of the situation rather than I do see that it's hard to do. But you, need, you at that moment, it's probably best to just say, look, I haven't done it, which is a fact. I have not won a Super Bowl. I've been close. I've been knocking on the door and uh, I own that. And, you know, next year I'm going to knock it down. That's how this is going to roll. And then everybody, I think, would get on board with that. Has he done that, though, Larry? I, f- I feel like Kyle hasn't done that. And well, Dylan hasn't Wilkes done what? Hasn't hasn't kind of galvanized you know, yeah, everybody I can be better. Like that's he doesn't. Was, he's not. But I mean, that'll help him, though. man. Let's be honest about Kyle Shanahan. He is arrogant. Really, really a good football coach. He's not really good at publicly owning blame. Wow. I mean, I if he is, I haven't heard it. I think that would go a long way with the fan base, Larry. Almost like to lie to him. Just say, I need to be better. Something like that as opposed to, I'm untouchable. Yeah, because that's how it comes off, and the and the whole Wilkes thing. Regardless, if you feel he should have been fired or not, the way that it was, hey, I hadn't linked it to coach, and you know, everybody, I thought he's coming back, and then, like you said, forty minutes later, he's gone. The only time I've heard Kyle really own failure was the day they traded Trey Lance. Now he he really opened up. He owned it. He won right over then. He he owned it. I mean, he's like, hey, it was my call. It was my. It's all on me, and this didn't work out, and I'm the reason. And you know, he owned it even maybe in ways that he didn't even really need to necessarily, but he owned it. But um, he's not great at taking to the podium and saying, you know, it's all on me. Now maybe afterwards, when cooler heads prevail, maybe he'd be better at saying, hey, look. I'm the, you know, I'm the guy making the, I'm the big dog here. You know, I'm the guy living in a $12 million house. I'm the guy making all the money. I'm the guy at the top of the masthead and the buck stops with me. And so I, I have it. to own it. I have to own it. Um, Accountability, Larry. Yeah. You know, and, and some guys are better at doing that than others. I think, I think of, of Kerr as, as that's what I love about Steve Man. is that he does Football. own it all the time. Um, Shanahan doesn't love to publicly own it. And, 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 and a lot of this frustration even goes beyond his regime and his tenure here. The reality is, the frustrating part, is the 49ers have been to seven NFC Championship games in a 13-year span, and they have not one Super Bowl Man, trophy to show for it. And that's what's so After being hard five to... And oh. Hard to grasp, hard to yeah. put your arms around them. The one that bothers me still to this day is the Harbaugh, you know, Ravens one because they Gore got to the nine. What would yeah. what would nine yard line, Larry? Seven, seven, seven yard line, line. Yeah. seven yard line, and Gore never touched it again. And damn, Kaepernick, you know they didn't. That Greg you, Roman, you didn't run Kaepernick, you didn't run Gore, you threw the ball. Some you of the worst out routes to, I've ever seen. I love you, Cap. Well, Michael James and touch passes to from quarterbacks that can't throw a touch and. It was a, it was a cluster, um, and they blew that one. But you know, Shana, it would help Shanahan, I think, a little bit. I like with that. his detractors yeah. if he would stand up and say, "Hey, look, there are a lot of reasons that we lost. Some that involve me directly, some that don't. But reg- regardless, the buck stops with me. I'm the oh, guy man. in charge, and I've got to own it and do. So let's make no ambiguity about any of this." You know, I own this. I think it would help him. Yeah, and I think, I think if he had somebody, uh, we'll get to these calls, Larry, but if he had somebody in his camp that would just be like, you know what, even if you don't believe it, it would go well in regard to your Q rating, you know, because, you know, you got people in the media that aren't fans, and, and Stani and I talk about it all the time, but when you got people that haven't seen their team win a Super Bowl but get there, Larry, their guts are ripped out, uh, their lives, we all got different lives and different things going on. Tomorrow's not promised. We know that. Just turn on the news and see that. So when you get an opportunity to kind of, you know, celebrate and, 
and, and show everybody what you worked hard for, which the Niners have, and you continuously get to this juncture. And, Larry, it's not like you're losing 30 to 10. That's one thing. Or a Mike Tyson knockout in his prime. I mean, every time it's a Dick Tracy or a true detective, you know, episode of why you had it, what went wrong. That's when, you know, it's kind of hard to just flush down the toilet. So let's go out to uh, San Francisco and welcome Mark to the program. Mark wants to share his thoughts on this Niner season. What's up, Mark? Yeah, gentlemen. Uh, how you doing, Larry? Doing great, Mark. Good to hear you, man. Good to hear you as well. You know, I think one, one problem that I see with the 49ers is I don't think too many teams are afraid of us throwing a deep pass. I think we need to stretch the field more. I think that's why Ayuk's upset. He doesn't see us going deep. Man. And stretching this this offense, and and that would open up the running game. It would help the guys getting the passes down low, and then running out, you know, with the ball. I, I think that's a problem that we gotta we gotta address. We gotta get that dimension of the deep threat. I agree. Yeah. I agree. You gotta be able to. Thanks threaten. for the call. You gotta be able to threaten in in all the deep quadrants of the field. I mean, that's why you drafted a Danny Gray. Um, Remember that? Remember Danny Gray was supposed to be, oh, boy, watch out. We're going up top. Well, and even even Kansas City. I mean, you think of Kansas City. They're the model organization in pro football. What did they do at the trade deadline? They added McCole Hardman. Well, why did they add McCole Hardman? Because he's a burner. Mm. Because he's a vertical threat. Because he offensive football is about creating space. Yes. And if you have McCole Hardman and he goes on a fly pattern, you have to cover him. That means that there's space open underneath. They targeted him three times in the Super Bowl. He caught three balls for 57 yards, one of them being a 52-yard touchdown, right? Or didn't he had a 52-yard play? And, and What a was Gibson doing on that play, Larry? I mean, he was there. I think, Gib- I think Gibson's gone. Okay. <laughs> I, think, I don't think that's a shock or anything. But I'm like, I think that Gibson's might be a gone. pick, and then he just kind of – I don't know what happened. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Gib- to me, the four – I mean – the other thing about this that it's like I have a hard time just raking Shanahan because we are living in the Patrick Mahomes era. This guy oh, is the man. protagonist of all these games. He is the – it's his – it's it's like – it's like I feel like we're watching his movie and we're involved in it. And it's like – but at the end of the day, he's the star of the show. But you had him down and, 10 twice. Well, that's why you don't give him the – chance to finish the game that's why you take that's why you didn't take the ball you should have given him the ball you don't want him with four downs with the game in his hands I mean that's where he's so good um I would have given them the ball first in overtime and 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 at least known what I needed to do to win the game you know we we talked about this early in the week would you rather be down and have a chance to come back against Kansas City's defense would you rather be up trying to defend against Mahomes and Kansas City's offense. And everybody that we asked that question to said, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd rather have the ball and be down than have Mahomes have the ball and him being down. Wow. Because he's just, it's uncanny how many times he comes through in the clutch. Yeah. Let's hear Steve Young on the... uh the Niners not known overtime rules. Yeah, I think anytime there's rules that that aren't understood, it, uh, it just does. You can't see, no one can hide from that. And the players, uh, when they said that after the game, it was alarming uh, that they didn't understand the context what they're what they're going through. And it is a new rule, but look, like let's get on. Let's. I agree with you. That is not a good look. I, I, I there's no there's no defending it. I like. I I'm just glad he had that answer that because yeah, Larry. There's. Like, that's on Kyle, no matter what you say. And, you know, I'm not telling you he should be ran, but I appreciate royalty, a guy that's got it done, Hall of Famer saying there's just no way. Larry Kruger can't come up with nothing to justify that. But, Larry, why would they feel comfortable throwing their coach under the bus? Or do you really think they – like – when you're they were being adult, honest. You know what, I mean, they were being live, honest. There's Damn. live mics. I mean, Huschek they said it honest. on the field. On the field, in the game. He's like, I didn't know that rule. And then the next <sighs> day he said, I didn't know that rule. And then two days later he's like, I knew that rule. <laughs> well, it's too late now, right? <laughs> I knew the rule. <laughs> Purdy was like, yeah, we knew the rule. They told oh, us the boy, rule. We knew. Armstead's like, I didn't know that rule. I mean, part of it's on the NFL because they change the rules every year. But you have to know the rules. Larry, I'm being honest. Loveman knows. I said this since Monday. I was sipping, watching the game, having a good time. I did not know that 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 was going to jump off, and the that's rules. okay because and you're a yeah, okay. really, really, right. really good okay. talk show host right. in San Francisco. I appreciate you, Larry. But you're not 
the Niners head coach. Right. If you were the Niners head coach and you didn't know it, it wouldn't be as charming. And if you delegate somebody else to tell the players, that person should be under fire too. Now, Kyle's not going to bring that name. Like Kyle said, he knew the rules. He That was somebody else's. But no, man, when, when you're at this stage, Larry's, I'm, there's one Captain James T. Kirk. Star, that's Star Trek. Yeah. Right. No, no, I don't. <laughs> no, no I, but I mean, the chief players said that Mahom, wow. that uh, Reed was going over it that's, in no, camp. No doubt. In camp. In training camp. Guys, it's a new rule. If, you know, you get to overtime in the playoffs, you know, this yeah. is the way it's going to go. So, I mean, you know, it's so much. And, and, and I, I know I understand with not wanting to bog your players down with too many thoughts and try to keep their mind as clear as possible. And, you know, s- defense coordinators will simplify their scheme because they want their guys to play Man. fast. They don't want them to do a lot of thinking. I understand. There's a time to kind of protect your players from the minutia, and there's times when they have to be kept apprised. Yeah, let's go and out. They should have known this rule, and there's no I'll way around it. And it's just it, – it makes it, – it, it, I feel bad for Shanahan because – he is a great football coach, and yet there's no, as Steve Young just said eloquently, there's no counter. Yeah. You know, there's no counter to not knowing the rules. We had Baldy in Vegas. He stopped by and chatted with us, and I pre- I asked him about Kyle and, you know, just where he's at with the chances, Larry. And at the end of the day, he didn't say uh, Kyle wasn't brilliant. He just said as a ball coach and, and in this thing we call sports, at some point you got to kick in the door. And, and and get that bling, and he's had ample opportunity. He has, but you know, at the same time, Andy Reid went 13 years in Philadelphia. They chased him out. Why? Because he couldn't win the big and one. That's what. And now he's won goes three. To. Yeah. So it's like, is Shanahan? You know how how much? I guess the question is this: We all know Shanahan's a good coach. Is he good enough to win a championship? We're still debating that. How many? Chances does he get? And he's forty four. I know this. How many he keeps bringing this up? He's forty four. This is your seven, right? I understand. Yes. Reed had thirteen. Yeah. So Reed had six more chances. If Kyle Shanahan, if we're six years from now, and he still hasn't gotten it done, and maybe there's one or two more Super Bowl appearances in there, at some point. You got to get it done, no doubt about it. But it, I don't think we're. Force, I don't think we're there yet, and I would be really, really upset if the 49ers parted ways with Shanahan because I don't see who they would be running to who's yeah. clearly better. Yeah, and I was telling, uh, just going relationship analogy. You know, if you're in a bad one, Larry, the best thing for your mentor is just to get out of it, but don't not get out of it because you're afraid to be alone or there's nobody on the radar. But at the end of the day, I do wonder if Jed York regrets or is kind of second guessing why he gave them the extra years when they did. Because oh, he was loves pretty, Kyle. Okay, so then, you so know. So you think Jed's looking at Kyle like that crazy girlfriend? No.